Rocky Laguna. Laguno, it's so great to have you on the show. Welcome. Well, you and I met in Miami. Um, I've been following your career. You started your life, uh, at least your tennis life, um, going to the United States. We didn't start there, but that you went went to the United States on a tennis tennis scholarship. You also played soccer or football, which is really interesting I want to get to. And, and you've been playing paddle professionally since 2008. We're in 2023. You are ranked 18th in the world. You've had a phenomenal year. Welcome to the joy of paddle. And in your own words, Patty, who are you? <laughs> Hi, Minter. It's really nice to have this talk with you. And uh, I'm really happy to to participate on it. And just the name of the podcast, I love it. It's the joy of paddle. I share that philosophy. So uh, Patty Yaguno is just, uh, uh, you know, a, a girl, a girl, <laughs> a girl that loves to play paddle uh, mm. since I'm a little girl. I was lucky that uh, my my parents, I grew up on a on a tennis center with paddle courts on it. So even when when I was like really young and nobody played paddle still. Uh, I could play paddle since I was like around 10 years old. I used to play more tennis because my, my father was a tennis coach, but he made these uh, um, different courts that he saw in Marbella. And he said, he actually saw two English women playing on it. And he said, oh, this court, it's different. And I think it's, it's, it's a, it's a kind of a sport that is going to be easy to play and really easy to have fun with. Mm. So he built two paddle courts on, on the tennis center that we had in, in Murcia, in La Manga. And I was lucky to have it like at home. So I could, you know, combine both sports since, since then. And, and yeah, uh, actually when, when I finished my degree in the U S uh, it's when paddle was starting to have like, serious um you know it, it was getting serious with the professional tour and all the stuff so i kind of uh start over again uh training and 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 here i am a few years later still enjoying it and and realizing how big it can get you know in just a few years and i'm just loving the the way it gets you know well you are amongst the legends of paddle both on the female and male sides who've been playing at, at this age and for so long and you know for, for, for most people who are listening to this show paddle is kind of the new thing and 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 they're very excited there are many addicts everyone who's listening nod your head mm -hmm. and and but and yet it can be an addiction for a long time in the most healthy of ways what do you think has kept you so enthusiastic and enjoying it. What is it that makes this paddle game such a, a long-term endeavor? Well, I think uh, it's a sport that is uh, really easy to start and have fun with, like even if you haven't played any other sport, like especially in Spain, it happened that many, many women that didn't play sports start playing it and they really had like fun really quick. Mm. And it also had the social part, you know, the after <laughs> the aftermath. La cerveza. <laughs> <laughs> La cerveza, yeah, that was that really worked out here too. <laughs> and I don't know. I mean, the thing is, like, you can improve paddle like really quick if you take it like a little bit serious. I think it's important not to take it too serious if you are an amateur player because some people like get really frustrated because it, all they can think about is paddle, and I'm like. I mean, you have to enjoy it. You you can you should not get obsessed with it. So it's just to find the, the way, you know, in the middle, the balance of having fun and wanting to learn and an improvement. But uh yeah, I mean, I think I still have that addiction is up there. <laughs> I love it. I love so it. So many play so many years playing and I still think I can improve. So, <laughs> and I think that is a, that's part of the key. There is that yeah, the idea absolutely. that you can still improve. I mean, as I, at my age, I'm trying to sort of stay with it as opposed to necessarily becoming the best or the strongest. And it's and a I, sport that is is changing every year, and yeah. for us, it's, ch it's changing every year. So it's there's like, new strokes, it's, it's, there's new it's... teammates, there's new courts. There's so much going on. And now, one other thing that was interesting to me. So. 
is the fact that you played football, soccer, do you, do you think that that contributed to anything to you? Or is that just sort of like a, just a way of having distraction? Well, I used to play soccer a lot in, in school uh, here in, in, in my case in Spain. And, you know, it was kind of sad because in Spain, soccer wasn't supposed to be for girls. And right. I was kind of mad about it. You know, when I was 14, I had to quit playing because mm. no, no other girls played. And I went, when I went to the States and I saw that all the girls played soccer over there, I was like, man, my dream would be to play on the team, on the college team. And since I played tennis for uh, four seasons and I had to stay one more year to finish my degree, they led me to, you know, to do the tryout for the team. And I still, you know, could remember some of the <laughs> techniques, some of my skills. Yeah. And I mean, I, I had a lot of fun and it was like a dream come true for, for me. Uh, but I mean, I don't, I think it helped me to, you know, to know more about a team sport because mm. uh, was more people involved on it and of course i mean it helped me to to keep develop developing as, as a because i love to play other sports anyways you know mm. I, I i love to do cycling i i um i play tennis and i love sports i'm i, I try to play basketball but i'm really bad <laughs> at it and i want to try golf because you don't have to you know to run as much anymore but still i think it's a really tricky sport so we'll see well <laughs> you know you make me smile patty by talking about basketball because you aren't the tallest person on the paddle court much less a basketball court <laughs> um, definitely not <laughs> Yeah, so you you were um, talking about uh, playing a team and and how that can help. And one of the things that's interesting to me is is looking at the pros like you and thinking about how they find the partner, and and what is it that makes for success? What do you think is the key element of making success? You've been playing with Lucia now for a good amount of time, and obviously having great great success. What is it that you feel is making your team such a good team? Well, uh, if if you're talking about this year, uh, um, I have to you know tell you like it, I have I ha this year I have three different partners because yeah. at the beginning of the year I decided to change sides and try to play at the right side. Right. But that didn't work out for me no. because I've played my whole life on the left side. On and, the left. And I mean, I I felt that I was learning a lot, but I thought that I needed a lot of time to feel as comfortable as I feel on my left side to be mm -hmm. competitive. Mm -hmm. So I talked to my first partner of the year and I, Victoria, and I told her, well, I have to be honest with you and tell you, I'm not, I, I don't feel I can be the, the kind of player that I want to be this year. So um, I, I, I think we need to, you know, to find a solution. So I decided to go to the left side again and play uh, with, or see, a, I th think it was like five or six tournaments. And then I had the call from Lucia. And the good thing about playing with uh, Lucia is that we know each other for a very long time because she has played the, the, all the tournaments. I think since, I would say like as many years as I did, uh, we're, we're, all, we're almost the same age. So yeah. And I think, we are kind of like in the same page, you know, with our sports career and with mentally, with our objectives and, and that kind of like worked out for us. So, uh, yeah, we, we feel we're doing a good job together and we understand the, the game that we gave to each other. And, you know, it's, it's really good for a team, you know, to, to grow, to make it work. So, yeah, and, and I mean, her kind of game, which is like really aggressive, she has like so much power that helped me out because I'm kind of like the player that, you know, do the the dirty job of like cleaning and stuff. But sometimes it takes me a while to finish the point. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're not the big uh, six foot two imposing player no, on the left. No. And that helps. Yeah. But it, maybe my mistake there is to think that you look so comfortable playing with Lucia. It it feels that way that you've been playing for a long time. So it's my mistake. I yeah. thought you had been playing with her before, but um. But what about, you know, the, like the in game points and when you're talking with one another, how do? Because I feel like 
a, a, in Spanish and the Argentinians, uh, just to say those two, they, they definitely get the idea that communication is vital. In the Anglo-Saxon world, we barely ever talk. You know, so, you know, thank you for the ball. You know, that's about it. <laughs> but you guys, you guys talk constantly during the point, during the, during, in between the points. And I'm just wondering what, what kind of insights you might be able to provide that help others to understand the, the power and the use of that type of communication. Of communication. Well, I would say that for me, it's a way to be connected with my partner after every point, you know, even though if you don't have to say like nothing really important, just to, to say like, you know, just look at each other and, and make a sign or something or like keep pushing or, or let's, let's, let's keep doing this or, you know, just to maintain, to be focused on, on, on what we're supposed to do on, on every point, you know, and like, I would say when we serve, we always say, uh, okay, I'm serving this way or that way, just to make sure that you, you expect the ball from there. Mm-hmm. And, and what yeah, about like, what about when uh, when Lucia makes a mistake or you make a mistake? You know, it's a, sort of an obvious yes. shot. Ah, you know, stupid. You already feel bad for yourself usually. But what about helping your partner at that moment? Well, that's the thing. Like sometimes in panel, like you you see the partner like doing uh, this reaction, which usually is not like like a good sign. Like <laughs> like the shoulders go down or the head go down and you know, we try to just have the reaction completely the opposite. Just, just say, okay. The, no, the, no, the okay. intention, the intention was good. Let's let's keep going. Or let's try this. Just, you know, to make her feel the support from from your side because you know that it can happen to you too, and <laughs> and you don't wanna you don't wanna feel bad about like you know like you wouldn't like to have this kind of reaction. So I think you always have to think on her shoes mm-hmm. to 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 do the same yeah, in a way the, the expression should be talk to them as you would like to be talked to absolutely the golden yeah. rule um the golden rule. yeah it is so um fantastic and um what would you say is the highlight of your year patty my highlight of the year i would say like we had a really fun uh time in cerdeña like we mm-hmm. had a platinum over there and it was yeah the fit and it was so nice because it, the the tennis center over there where we played it's so nice like you could hear the all the birds around it was like first week of october but mm. the weather was perfect and and i mean uh, all the people over there was like really nice i love italy like i love italian food too so <laughs> and i don't know like I felt that at that point, like I, I was playing for Lucia for already, like it was our third tournament. So we felt that everything was working out in, in, in that moment. So, mm-hmm. and we ended up winning the tournament. So, I mean, I would choose that moment absolutely. And, magico, uh, magico. Magico. It was, it, it was a, it was a great uh, week over there. Yeah. I certainly watched that final. I can tell you. Um, well done for that. And uh, what about uh, describing yourself as a player? Yeah, you obviously on the left. You're not a giraffe. Um, but what sort of? How would you describe your play as an animal? What sort of animal do you describe yourself as? I saw that question and I didn't know what to say. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like I would say, like maybe. Yeah, I know. I know what animal would be because I have a few friends that made. Uh, T-shirts for for in not in, not in that case with Lucia, but I had I used to have a partner that I played with her for nine years. Which uh, her name is Ellie, and they build uh, they draw us as ants, you know ants they, ants yeah Worker. because like we were we were really hard and we bring every point like it would be <laughs> like really, really important. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. That makes total sense. And what about your favorite shot, Patty? What's your favorite shot to play? Well, uh, I would say uh, all the right-handed shots, like maybe the um, you, you know everything when, on the forehand, everything on the forehand. yeah on the fo- yeah on the forehand. Uh, you know when you get attacked and you get like a counterattack. How do you say like when you get the, a counterattack? Def- counterattack, yeah, on counterattack from yeah from both sides, but maybe from the right 
from the forehand. Yeah. You feel more comfortable down the middle, obviously. Then. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Well, what about a shot that Patty Laguno is trying to improve on? You said at the beginning my, you can always improve. My rulo, my rulo, el rulo, el rulo, el rulo. It's it's the it for me. It's like a confident shot. You know, if if mm. I feel confident with the rulo, okay, this is going to be mm. a good day for myself. Mm. <laughs> when I get to play left, I feel that. So for the, for anyone listening who doesn't know what the rulo is, you're you're on you're playing left, well, basically left as a right-hander and you're you're close to the net basically and you're just trying and you're generally closer up to the net and you're just rolling it into the side netting on the side that's the el ruler rolling it in there yeah. and uh, yeah I, I i feel you i mean once i i feel that i'm like oh i can i you can start doing it from the middle of the court and you start like having fun with it right yeah yeah i mean because so many things can happen after that shot. So uh, yeah, exactly. If it, if you get it right, or it hits the pico, right, or something like that. What <laughs> about um? So uh, who are your favorite players to that you admire and look at? Well, uh, n- right now I would say that uh, Ari Sanchez, uh, the girls. I think she became like the most complete player in the last few years, and I think she's gonna. He's going to stay there for a while. <laughs> At the top. Uh, yeah, she's going to be there. And, I mean, she's so talented and her mental part, she works yeah. a lot on that and, and you can feel the difference. Yeah, you can right see now. her, the, the concentration, the the fortitude, even when she's down, you still see her going, she's really concentrated and, and she's very solid. Good Lord, what a great yeah, solid player. Is. And then for the guys, I would, I mean, I think Tapia, we are all in love with Tapia. <laughs> right now i mean what he did in so many like in not that much time and i mean coelho too but you know you see coelho like he's got that like all this power you know that but tapia like every shot he makes is like oh you just nervioso, you just, nervioso. You just fall in love with it yeah, yeah. <laughs> well and, and 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 something patty that i i feel from the outside that a lot of the paddle players have a a charming attitude. When you look at tennis, lawn tennis, many of the pros don't aspire. Don't don't look at. I don't look at them and feel. Oh, these are really interesting or nice people. They they might be, but they just don't come across that way. Maybe because paddle is such an. I mean, tennis is such an aggressive sport. Whereas in paddle, we you can't help but also feel charm oozing out of like an Agustin Tapia. He's just he's yeah. just a lovely character. He's he's so good and yet feels so humble. Do you mm-hmm. do you feel that? Well, I think like the main difference in Paddle that you have you always have to play doubles and you always have to communicate with your partner. And that's in tennis is like more like individual game and you don't you don't need to communicate with anyone if you don't want to. So paddle push you to that and I mean now it's a it's a young sport like we don't have that many you know opponents uh, but I mean I think the more it grows up yeah. the more aggressive it will get <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that will happen but I mean it's it's like professional sports it makes it more more serious and, mm-hmm. and people like get more into his own bubble I would say mm-hmm. but I mean since we travel all together all over the world. We mm-hmm. try to, you know, you feel, we feel like, like we're like a big family. Well, I certainly hope that uh, some of that will stay. I mean, just like the beginning of the matches, there's this sort of uh, an informality. There's a, a kindness that four people will stand to get photographed to begin with. At the end, yeah. all four embrace. You don't see that happening in lawn tennis. And I have to attribute some of that to the Hispanic or the Latino flavor. <laughs> Well, maybe if you feel <laughs> good, it could be. I mean, it could be. It always happens also that you know you have some other players that you don't get along that that well, and of course. I mean, you you just try to be as polite as possible. And yeah. uh, I mean, I think like it's, life. it's okay. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, every, everybody can be as as whatever he wants. Of course, totally true. What what's the funniest thing, Patty, that's happened to you now in your 20 plus years of playing well, it happened few things yeah uh, I mean 
which one should I tell you about that? I'm the one that comes to your mind. Do you know? Let it be. Let it fall. Well, so, uh, I remember one time with my coach, uh, with Neki Berwin. She's an Italian, a uh, Brazilian coach, and, and she used to be a, a battle player too. And we were trying, like she told us to to do this strategy against to like the the couple that was number one at that point, that it was Cecilia Reiter and Carolina Navarro. And we were supposed to play like over Cecilia Reiter all the time, you know, and we were kind of like tired of that tactic. And, and we, we kind of asked her, okay, can we play however we want? Like, because we feel like we can beat them just with no strike. <laughs> and she said, yeah, sure, just go for it. I mean, I'm not going to say anything. And we were... We were down 6-0 on the first. Uh oh. And she was like, okay, you, you guys want to keep doing this? <laughs> I just broke my she 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 was like 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 down, like sitting down. And she's like, I just got broke my my pants on my on on the on the back part of my <laughs> so I'm I'm kind of like you guys right now. Like I can go get another pants or I just can <laughs> with these pants for the rest of the match. <laughs> uh, I love so it. we decided to get going. I don't know why, but I mean it's a it's a match that we will always remember. It was played in Alicante. And I mean we got beat so bad. <laughs> so yeah, we, we decided it's important to play with the strategy from there. Uh it's philosophy yeah <laughs> i love it and and did the coach stay with her ripped trousers yeah yeah <sighs> absolutely she was in our team like she was i'll be there with you guys until right. the end <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah 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 six love six love something like that well, um so well, and i suppose that might leads into the next question which is what what life lessons what what has paddle brought to you in life well it's so many so many lessons like i, I couldn't tell you what but what I'm getting the most of this uh, journey, I would say, like, you know, I, I saw this sport, like, growing up, like, you know, like nobody knew about it. And, you know, and now we're traveling around the world and it's helping me to to be at so many different places and meet so many different people. And it's my passion. Like, I, I love to play paddle after, like, so many years. And, I mean, it's helping me to give my all. You know, just to mm. give my all to to, and not only playing. I would say in in all the aspects that the sport involves. You know, sometimes you have to work on you know uh, with your partner or with your opponents, and just just you know become a a, a better person every day doing mm. this. You know, so yeah, I, I'd I'd say it's it's a really helpful tool for mm. for my life that it's. You know, I'm, I'm enjoying the ride, just that. Mm. And uh, what about how do you deal with not getting injuries? How what's the, What are your tips do you have for not getting injured? Because I've seen, I think at the beginning of this this last year, we saw many players getting their arms strapped up and having to, you know, LeBron and, and others having to retire for a few at least months. What, yeah. what's, your, what's your, what sort of tips do you have to, to stay healthy? Well, you know, with the years, I kind of learned a lot, a lot about my own body. And mm. I would say that because I remember the first years that I played uh, and I could run all over the court, like, with, like, I wouldn't know how much left I have to play the rest of the game. You know, mm -hmm. I would play just and sometimes. Yeah. And I needed, I didn't understand, like, I was getting tired of the mid, of the middle of the game. And so I think, like, Every year you learn more about yourself, like how much can you give at every point. Mm. And and you also learn how to take care better of yourself too. Mm. And doing like just adding some stuff. Like one year I start working with a nutritionist and, and help me how to, you know, how to eat well and what things feel good for myself. So I'm really curious about that part because, you know, I I like to take care of myself. I'm feeling well, and I feel every year I feel better. So mm. <laughs> I don't know how much longer it's gonna it's gonna work for myself, but I mean I'm feeling good, mm. and I'm I'm working also very much on on the on the physical part, like mm -hmm. the pre prevention. You say yeah. prevention yeah. moves and and mobility and 
you know, uh, giving your body the right to talk, I would mm. say. And uh, my body talks to me a lot. <laughs> Seriously. I love it. Well, I'd say probably most bodies talk, but not everyone listens. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. So that's a really lovely tip. What about, um, so the fact, another thing that I find really interesting in, in paddle for non-pros and all that is the conversion or the, you know, I come from tennis. You had a little bit of a unique life in that you played both tennis and paddle at the same time. You had your four or five years in the States and Georgia. You come back to paddle. What are the tips that you have when you you're obviously you're probably got lots of tennis friends who are coming to paddle. What tips do you, could you provide that helps tennis players to properly get into paddle? Well, you know the first one that comes to my mind is uh, when I when I learned when I took my first lessons of paddle. Like everybody said that you shouldn't have your backhand with two handed hmm. and. And I used to have a two-handed backhand in playing tennis. Not really good, but I had a two-backhand. So I started playing with one-handed, you know, like really, really slice one. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like the classic paddle from that point. Right. And and now for for all the tennis players that 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 are coming to this sport, hello, I, I have a friend here coming. Love to... it. Hey. <laughs> it's Severino, yes. Well. Now all the tennis players are using this two backhand, right? A uh, backhand which is like really powerful and it makes you counterattack really, really well. Mm -hmm. Get back That's over the first the thing that, yeah, yeah. Like for example, Victoria Iglesias has like really good one. Marta That's Marrero. Uh, with the Javi, guys, Garrido. Javi Garrido. Javi Garrido has, too. Like... Yeah, and I mean, I think it's really helpful. And I, what I would say in my case, when I played tennis for four years and then I went back to paddle, I felt the court was really small. <laughs> like I could run all over the court too. So <laughs> that helped me too. And I mean, I think there's like many shots. And my the second serve from tennis, it helps mm -hmm. you a lot for the rulo too. Of course. And even, you know, Portres. It's the same kind of yeah. action, right? Just get let it go back and roll it. Yeah, that's the thing about tennis. Like the technique is so complex that mm -hmm. for paddle is not. And if you have that, you know, uh, ability to do the technique in tennis, you shouldn't mm -hmm. have a problem to to reach it at paddle for sure. Mm -hmm. So the word I'm getting there is focus on the good things from tennis when you bring them to paddle, because it's sort of. Obviously, also, the problem for tennis players is letting the ball go by you and letting, you know, have the wall and all that. Yeah. And uh, I would say, like, also the the preparation of the shots, like, mm. they're, like, really long for the for the ball. You have to make it, make them shorter. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> that happens to me so many times. Like, my coach tells me, look, can you bring the racket down directly and don't do, like, all the opening? <laughs> I'm like... I don't know. It's it's a fabric problem, okay? <laughs> well, there is an aesthetic to it, you know, when you get the nice big round. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> well, you think you're brilliant. feathered or something, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, in my dreams, that's for sure. And what about, so l last couple of questions. Um, the World Paddle Tour is about to uh, be closed down, moving to Premier. What do you think of that whole changeover? Well, we think it's a change that it's for good, it's for better. And I mean, in my case, I would say we're like really, really thankful to World Paddle Tour because it has been like a 10 year trip uh, that were in my case where I felt that paddle went all the way up and all the way out to the world. And we don't know how Premier is going to be and how it's going to work, but it's like a new adventure and we have to trust them and and also work for 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 them to to make it you know, a, a really good product for for everyone. And mm. and I mean, we're excited about the change. And I think, I, I mean, it took a while to, to make the, the the story ends with a happy ending. Uh, no doubt. It was tricky. But it was I mean, tricky. yeah, it was tricky. And, 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 you know, we share so many years with the workers from World Paddle Tour. It's kind, yeah. it's kind of sad, you know, that part. But I mean, I guess it's 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 life, no? No, life moves, life changes. One of the things life that I, I I certainly I, I look at it from the outside, and you know what? Well, 
obviously, and and see that from a, a audience perspective or a transmission perspective, World Paddle Tour has some really good and well done elements for like the highlights they do. And so, and of course, the one big change that I see, well, outside of the fact that you'll have a uniformity and you won't have to vie for which one you're going to do and have rankings that are unified, Deuce or Golden Point, are you going to be happy as heck to get rid of the Golden Point or are you going to regret? Well, I'll, I'm going to be fine either way. Like, I don't really... Mm, like when we got the golden point, it was a big, it was a huge change uh, for the game. And after a few months, we realized we can, we could adapt perfectly. So, I mean, whatever they decide, it's going to be, that part is, is going to be fine. Like, um, we just, uh, we're fighting for other things like, you know, like being equal with the guys and, mm -hmm. That kind of thing is it's the most important for for the for the girls. Absolutely. All right. And last question for you, Patty. What does uh, two twenty twenty four have in store for you? What is there? The what are you what are you looking forward to for next year? For next year, I mean, I'm just uh, hoping for health, uh, be healthy, and keep you know, the smile. Keep, yeah, and keep. Um, with the same motivation as every day, like enjoying enjoying the ride. <laughs> Absolutely. I, there's a Grateful Dead song that goes, uh, I may be going to hell in a bucket, but at least I'm enjoying the ride. Enjoying the ride hey, yeah. Patty, uh, thank you so much for coming on to the Joy of Paddle. It is a true joy to listen to you. I love your energy. Congratulations on this year and looking forward to following you, hopefully getting to see you again in live at some or other performance. Muchas gracias. You. We will see each other in live. Sure. Vamos, thank Patty. You. Thank, thank you, Minter. Big kiss. Big kiss, too. <laughs>